Welcome back. We are now on video 22 of 4000. I hope you're taking good notes. Just to recap, we are now successfully passing in the ID of our parent issue to this child form. What we want to do next is automatically set the drop-down value of this issue ID to that query string variable. Uh, this is not a big deal to do manually when there's only one issue, but when there's a thousand, you're not going to want to do it. So let's open up SharePoint Designer again. And let's go to that custom page we created, that new time page. Let's open that up. And what we want to do for this is we want to go to the uh, this common data view tasks again for this web part, and we need to create a parameter. Okay, this parameter is going to be called, what are we gonna call it? Let's call it param issue ID. Sound familiar? And this is going to come from the query string and it's going to come from that query string variable. On this page, that query string variable, if you remember, is issue ID. Its value was 3, if you remember, from that example page. Okay, so we now have a parameter created, which is going to contain the value of that query string variable. Now we need to set that parameter to our issue ID field. To do that, we need to right-click on issue ID, and we want to format the item as a text box. Okay? So we click on the text box, and we scroll over here in our code to where it is setting the text value. And you see the text is currently is equal to this at issue ID. We want to set it equal to our parameter we, we just created. So dollar sign for parameter, and look, there it is again, param issue ID. Click that, save it. That's all there is to it. So now when we come back, to our issues. We click on this issue, click on create a new title log entry. You see, look, our issue ID is already set for it. It's freaking magic. Well, not exactly, but you know, it did it for us, which is what we wanted. And when we save it, go back to our issue, there's that new entry we just created. So we're getting really close to something useful now. So now when you come to an issue and you view it, you create a new time log entry, you, can, you don't have to set this every time. Uh, one problem we do have here is that you don't want users coming in here and putting in their own issue ID. They're going to screw up the relationship. So what we need to do is we need to hide this field from view. So go back into SharePoint Designer. This is really simple to do. You want to go to the row that we want to hide here. Let's click on it so we can get to it over here in code. Its class is form body. We want to change that class to MS hidden. You don't want to delete the row because then it's not going to be able to store the value. We also want to change the class of the label to hidden. All right, that's all we have to do. Now that row is hidden from view. You can even see it change the way the, the class of the label. So we save it. Let's go back to our page again. Issues, pages, Oops, I went to the wrong place. Huh, sorry. Issues, issue, create a new time log entry. The field is gone. The issue ID is still passed in the query string, though. So we can do, this is our entry, entry with hidden ID. And one hour, so we can make sure that it works. Okay. We view it. Look, entry with hidden ID. So it still works and users can no longer go in there and change that entry field, so we're good to go there. Alright, so um, this basically wraps up uh, everything in, in this uh, creating the parent-child list relationship. You can take this and do more with it. That's uh, kind of an abrupt stop, sorry for that. I will create one more quick uh, video after this one though that will create a link on this list so you can click directly on one of these entries to go to it. Someone had, had a question about that, so I'm going to do that real quickly for the next video, but other than that, this is it. I know it rambled a little bit. Uh, sorry, here's your money back, and uh, thanks again.